very special chef on set with me today. Her name is Oyendo, also known as Oyinski's Kitchen. She's 17 and she's going to teach us how to make. Um, today I'll be making a seared sea bass with a green pea puree alongside some charbroiled caramelized carrots and sweet potato mash. Nice, so let's get into it. Sounds yummy already. <laughs> so first of all, actually, before we start, can you just, you know, Tell us a bit about you, how you fell into your love for cooking, you know, how long you've been cooking for. Um, okay, so I'm a 17 year old. Um, I currently attend sixth form where mm -hmm. I'm studying A levels. But um, I've had a passion for cooking, I would say, from about the age of seven. Yeah. Um, being in a family where everyone kind of cooked, whether it was a nature or a passion or just something that we did, I felt like being around people who constantly did that kind of stemmed my love for it. Um, I wouldn't ever say I was ever sat down and taught how to cook, but either trying to help, help people in the kitchen or just lingering around, lingering around people cooking helped me to develop my skills. Um, I also did a few technology in GCSEs, which is where I learned more the, like, more the technical sides, so like flitting a fish or deboning chicken. Um, since then, obviously I opened, I started running my own company where I was able to continue practicing and doing things that would, I guess, further grow my love for it as well as learning to teach myself. I'm going to start with sweet potatoes just because I guess that will take longer to cook that. Okay. Thing. So I'm going to begin to remove the skin. I use a potato peeler. Some people can use a knife, but I just think it's a bit easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just peeling off the skin. So approximately how long do you um, think a meal like this will take and how many people can eat? Um, okay, with it being fish, mm -hmm. fish cooks pretty quickly, but in total I would say maybe about 40 minutes. Okay. So I'm just gonna um, roughly chop these. We're gonna need them pretty small, so this is for the mash. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that the small one I cut it up until it cooks. Okay, so I've finished cutting up the potatoes. Yeah. I'm just waiting for my water to boil mm -hmm. a little bit. So I'm gonna move on to the caramelized carrots. Ooh. Um, so with these carrots, I tend to about this side and shape just mm -hmm. so you don't have to um, cut them okay. and change yeah. much. You can choose to um, skim off the edges. So are the knives you use, are you quite particular about the kind of knives yes, you use? Yes, I am. Like um, Different sizes tend to help. So like with the filleting of the fish, I use this knife just because it's more bendy a little yeah. bit compared to a big knife mm -hmm. that chops potatoes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say that I've become a bit comfortable with these potatoes. Nice. Yeah. With the carrots, the first thing I'm going to do is just create a little syrup, should I say, mm -hmm. I'm using um, butter, honey, and a little bit of garlic. Okay. So I'm going to chop up. Nice. Time to get two garlic cloves. So how much butter do you need? I would say about two tablespoons. Okay. Two big tablespoons. Yeah. The water's boiled enough, so yeah. I'm going to just go into the sweet. So we're going to be adding the potatoes in yeah. now. Can help you. I'm just going to season the potatoes with some salt. This is rock salt. Yeah. Rock salt. So we're just going to need that to boil for approximately 15 minutes. So these are cut fairly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to cut the butter. So I'm going to put about four tablespoons of honey into this. Mm -hmm. So what's the purpose of the honey to make it? So the it? honey helps with the caramelization of okay. it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is just prepare my sea bass. I have already filleted it, but um, when I say prepare, I just mean in the way that I'm thinking about how I want to plate it, so then that will depend on how I decide to cut the fish. So is sea bass your favorite fish? Yeah. I like it because it's very like delicate in flavor. You don't ever have to season it too much. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to slice my carrots in half. Okay. Um, if they were slightly smaller, I think I would have left them. But again, plating purposes. And we're just going to toss in our carrots. Mm -hmm. And we're going to stir that in together and just like kind of allow the sauce to So this will be the sauce. Cook. Yeah, this will be the sauce that the carrots are going to um, cook in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put these into the oven for about 20 minutes. And the aim is that they will come out quite sticky. So I've just got a bit of mint here, which I'm going to roughly and finely chop. Mm -hmm. Toss a little into the pan. So we've got our carrots here, and we're mm -hmm. just going to put them into an oven proof 
dish. Yeah. We're not going to put all of the juice because we want it to go crispy, not too soggy. Okay, we're just going to put this into the oven. Yeah. I'm going to set at gas mark 150. 150. Yep. And we're going to leave it in there for about 15 minutes. Okay. Keep an eye on it because it may get to the point where you think it's okay. Yeah. But I would say a minimum. Cool. So the next thing we're going to make is the pea puree. It's pretty simple. It's literally just a combination of frozen garlic peas yeah. and water. When we cook it, we cook it on a little bit of butter, black pepper and salt. Um, so I'm just going to season my fish. Yeah. So for the fish, you just put about the equivalent of a tablespoon of olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, you put butter as well. The reason you put butter and olive oil is to help the fish, the fish get crispy. So we go skin down. Mm -hmm. So do you serve it this well for your family when you're cooking? Um, funny enough, I do. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm about to try this divine dish. Mm. Wow, really good. Thank you. Have you decided if you're going to go to uni or you're going to go to culinary school? Um, so I'm torn between the two. If I decide to go down my passion of cooking, mm. the best option would have to be culinary school or go into an apprenticeship to do with the whole food um, marketing, food yeah. business and culinary skills. Um, alternatively, I'll go to university, but I wouldn't study anything food related because personally I just think it's a waste to go to uni to study, to study yeah. food. So yeah, if I went to uni, it would be to pursue, I guess, other ambitions that are more academic related. But um, at the moment, I'm more torn towards the go down the apprenticeship and clinical school. Mm -hmm. so that's where my passion lies. Yeah. But obviously, you're trying to understand that you might need a backup just because the food industry is very difficult and competitive. So I feel like that's why I'm quite torn between the two of trying yeah. to get a qualification just so that I'm not kind of left without anything. Oh, I'm sure. I'm definitely <laughs> sure you'll figure it out. Yeah. But thank you so much for joining me thank today on Chef me. Spotlight. <laughs> Guys, it's been amazing. I've learned how to cook this amazing dish and I'm sure you guys will try and replicate it too. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Thank you to all my subscribers for tuning into Chef Spotlight. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video. All ingredients will be left in the description box below.